welcome back to The Average. Today I'm gonna do something completely different. Well, completely different for me anyway. I don't know if you guys have probably seen this before or done this before, but I have never done paper art before, except maybe like a project when I was about 10, where we did a card. I don't know what this history lesson of Steph is about. No one cares. Okay, moving on. So I wanted to do this thing where I was gonna tell like a scary story whilst I made a spooky scene but then I realised that I couldn't quite find a story that I liked that wasn't completely lame. Never mind. I have like horror stories and horror films and stuff so I thought like I could tie that into all my other hobbies that I'm tying into this channel but yeah I couldn't find a short story that was like cool like I said and just not like cheesy like there's a dead person under your bed that's not you know I didn't want to go that route instead I thought oh I'll do a creepy forest um cabin in the woods scene and spooky guys out and then I realized that it's not spooky at all it turned out quite sweet and I mean probably I would go and stay there because it just looks very nice and relaxing and yeah I, I completely failed on spookiness which I you know and that's not surprising to me because even though I like spooky stuff, I don't think I'm a very spooky person. I think I've said spooky about 10 times by now, so yeah. So what I did was I drew out a little scene in my sketchbook and it's completely tiny, just a little thumbnail of this cabin in the woods. And then I didn't do any other planning except for that because I just had fun with this project basically. I painted out the different layers so the first layer is like two trees in the foreground and then I wanted another tree and another layer of maybe like this hill or this mountain rolling away and then I wanted definitely wanted a cabin there because I was still unsure if I wanted to make it a scary story about a cabin in the woods type situation and then I drew this cabin out and I thought oh maybe I can like bring it round back to being a scary story but no super cozy cabin coming up you'll see it was quite fun to draw this log cabin I've never drawn a log cabin before and it was pretty difficult because I was like how how is this log system working and I realized that the logs are stacked on top of each other but then I was like but how are they interlaced like that they must be cut there must be a whole cup for each layer to slot in and even though I know that my brain couldn't transition that onto the paper it, it couldn't make sense of it so it was very difficult at first I had to keep rubbing out and redrawing it and then realizing like okay just keep one log one side and then yeah a whole lot of confusion for no reason at all just having a brain fart you know I would, and then I realized like oh obviously they're stacked on top of each other yeah absolute fool so it was quite nice to paint this out. I used acrylics this time. I was thinking I was gonna use watercolors, but then I thought, you know, if I'm layering these papers on top of each other and I need to paint anything or add anything that I didn't add before because I, I didn't just see it coming or I couldn't do it because until I stuck everything together, I didn't see that it needed that, then I would need to use acrylics because of how opaque they are. I could just go in and paint straight over the top of something which was actually really handy and kudos to past me. And I didn't think, you know, things don't genuinely work out for me um, art wise, they kind of go one way or the other. So I was glad that worked out. I don't know what I'm saying. Coffee. I had a lot of coffee today. I realised that this video is probably coming out a little bit late out of my schedule because I was trying to do this but I didn't want to rush it because I was having fun with it and also it was going quite well so I didn't want to come out with a piece that I wasn't pleased with. So I've basically spent all day on this guys so I hope you enjoy it. <laughs> I realised that I couldn't find my um, cutting tool. What the heck is it called? Stay? Scalpel. Scalpel. I couldn't find my scalpel so at first I was doing everything with scissors which was fine and then I realised that I needed to cut out smaller details and I was like okay well it's time to find the scalpel so I spent like 20 minutes trying to find that and I found it so you know happy end to the story everyone good night good day goodbye cutting out all these pieces is pretty therapeutic it's very finicky but once you do it it's very satisfying and I really liked this part of the process even though my hands probably hurt a little bit afterwards because you're pressing down on these things and try not to cut yourself all at once. Yeah, be careful out there kids. 
cutting the windows was a really fun idea because I, well you'll see in a bit, but I layer like an orange paper behind and it kind of looks like someone's in the house and the fire's coming up to the heavens and it's, it's just nice, just cosy, nice things. Whilst I was making this, I was watching um, 13 Reasons Why season 2, have you guys seen that yet? I haven't finished it but ugh. I think I was just sitting there getting in a bad mood because it is a very heavy topic obviously and very sad so I just I was just like yeah, tensing up but then working on this just like zoning out trying not to think about it too hard but it is a really good show so I don't know if you guys have seen that. What else did I do? I'm also nearly finished with the book that I'm going to do the paint over cover for soon and I will let you guys know what that is when I do the video so I don't know why I'm telling you this but yeah really nearly accomplished finishing that book. If you guys follow me on Goodreads you probably know which book it is. No spoilers guys. So the next bit I cut out these trees and I was like Oh, I'll do these white trees and the purple background and then I'll just cut out the trees But then I realized I cut it wrongly and I kept the white trees Instead of, does that make sense instead of the background? But then actually I liked the way it turned out. It added a real like pop to the um, Paper art. I was gonna say illustration then I guess it's an illustration paper illustration And then I was gonna use because you can see that I kept all those little purple pieces I was gonna use them in the illustration and like put them behind the trees and see if I could make some sort of 3d effect in that sense, but then I just didn't use I used a little bit of the purples to create um, Some winding trees in and out, but I don't know why I kept all those pieces of paper and I laid them out so neatly So I would know which one went where uh, there was like a gust of breeze because I had the window open and it just ruined it so I was like whatever, don't care, go away then. So then I just started layering up all the different layers. I had this cool idea to make, to take tracing paper and use it as fog and I think it worked on, like it looks good in some sense but I think as well it kind of, I don't know if it works 100% but I like it later on when I use it more in the foreground it make it looks better. Here it just kind of blurs a little bit, but I don't know, what do you guys think about the fog tracing paper aspect? I realised here that I made the cabin um, and trees too small compared to those giant trees in the background, but then I thought, hey, you know what, like just pretend that these are giant trees behind the cabin, and that's fine. And then I thought if I stacked it up a bit higher, it could work a bit better. And then what I did was just tucked the blue trees that are by the cabin behind, in and around the trees behind them. So it looks like they were growing back into the woods behind the cabin, if that makes sense. I had a lot of fun with like bending shapes and making things pop out and giving curvature to things towards the camera. You can't really tell the depth now, I don't think, but at the end I'll show you different angles of what the paper craft looks like and it's quite fun um, looking at the different angles and like being able to kind of go into the picture and look at it. I'm really happy with the colour scheme I used here as well because it is a nighttime scene in the woods I thought instead of just using browns I'd use different pops of colour like so I'd use dark purples, dark greens, um, different array of things and I wanted that moonlight to start kind of shine down and highlight different areas to sort of get the sense of mood of the whole scene. It was quite fun to play around with that and at one point I cut off that smoke because I was going to use tracing paper as a smoke but I realised I much like that big bam of white um, curving paper, especially I can get that effect with tracing paper of it curving out towards us. But with this card paper it, looked, it had a really nice curve as if it was floating up towards us and up into the sky, so I wanted to keep that in and I stuck it back onto the chimney. I think the hardest part of this was arranging each piece to look good against the other, so bending all those little bits to go behind each other or bending them away out from the scene behind it because I definitely wanted some distinction from each layer and I don't know if I necessarily got that as well as I 
wanted to. I sort of wanted like a box frame kind of feel to it, if that makes sense. And yeah, I think it kind of worked. And obviously when you're looking at it straight down, you can't get a sense of the layers or depth within the piece. So I think in that sense, it's kind of a fail, but then I really like looking at this. So I don't know if it's a super fail or if it's just next time because I definitely want to do this next time because it was just really fun. So I guess next time I know all these little things that I failed with on this um, project, then I can take it over to the next project and be like, oh yeah, uh, change that, change this, and it will be a better outcome. I'm saying that like I wasn't pleased with how this turned out, but I was really pleased with this and I had so much fun doing it. It would be great to play around with adding characters and different things to it next time, or just doing a completely different scene. I went in with a watercolour pen and added detail to the foreground images which I really think tied the um, craft together because it made it seem like yes these things are next to us. They would have more detail than the things in the background and I think that worked because they would have more detail than things in the background. Even though the background is heavily detailed I think it helps to pull the, the depth and feel of the piece together. It was fun doing, like adding these final details and seeing the illustration all together and working on little things that maybe didn't work. I added some more fog, aka tracing paper in the foreground too. And I wish I had added it on the very, very foreground, the two trees. I wish I had added a little bit of fog, but I didn't know if that would be overkill. Oh, I made a massive mistake here when I painted, like I painted shadows, which I think really, really helped things pop. But then I painted a shadow over the fog and I was like, why have I done that? That doesn't make any sense. Like, why would there be a shadow on fog? Oh, well, <laughs> it doesn't matter. So here's the final thing. I had a lot of fun making it and let me know if you guys liked seeing it because I want to make more for sure. You can definitely see the different depths of the piece here when I filmed it and it was just, it was great fun and I'm really pleased with the outcome. Let me know what you guys think um, more importantly and yeah, here's a spooky ghost for you because it's a spooky scene after all, don't get scared. Alright guys, thanks for watching, please like and subscribe and I will see you next time, bye!